moment, you will hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of the many fine programs brought to you Sundays on NBC. Later this evening, listen to the NBC Star Playhouse with one of your favorite stars. Here, meet the press, America's number one newsmaking program, and be sure to keep tuned for the dramatic story of communism in America on Last Man Out. It's a wonderful lineup of great programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle, unmarked. People call them both the six-shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the six-shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. It must have been about four o'clock in the afternoon when I rode out of the Saucer Mountains and hit the flat, and the scar stretched his legs and went into a high lope. And, oh, he seemed real anxious to get across the eight miles of prairie between the hills and Clay City. Oh, you easy, boy. Easy now. Hey, what's your rush? <laughs> I don't know. He, maybe he was hungry, and maybe he was thirsty, or maybe... Oh, no. No, no, it couldn't be that. Why, it was over six months since our last visit at Clay City. Scar couldn't still be remembering the filly from the livery stable. Not after all that time, no. Besides, horses don't have memories, at least not as good as... Now, 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 you just slow down, boy, now. Quit. Well, there wasn't anything I could do except just keep a tight rein on him, I guess. Something sure was spurring Scar along. Whatever it was, it was important. At least it was to him. Well, we'd covered about half the distance to town when I noticed a couple of dark specks, oh, maybe a mile or so ahead of us. And the way they were shaped and the way they were barely moving, well, they just about had to be pack burrows. But it wasn't until we almost caught up that I spotted Hiram, and he was beating one of those burrows with a cottonwood switch and giving us such a cuss that he didn't even hear us riding up toward him. Easy, oh, Scar. Right Easy, right now. You start traveling, I'll set fire to you. And I don't... Ah, I'm not fooling. And I am warning you. I'll give you such a burning that you won't be able to... <laughs> oh, I am. Yeah, but I'll... Where'd you come... Oh, <laughs> Brett, for a second there, you kind of startled me. What? I didn't know you was on my tail. Uh, the burrs been acting up, I am? Oh, they're just being themselves, Brett. No. That's the trouble, they're just being themselves. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I sure know what you mean. Where are you heading, Clay City? That's right. I heard you was riding the herd for the Circle G. Last time I was in getting some supplies, you told me. Are you going to town on business? No, no, the ranch gave me a day off, tomorrow being 4th of July. 4th of July? Well, I'll be cussing, 4th of July. I've been out on the hill so long, I lost all track of time. I didn't even know what month it was, <laughs> not for certain. <laughs> oh, so you're going to do a little celebrating, man. Eh? Well, I just thought yeah, I'd... Come to think of it, uh, I got me something to celebrate, too. <laughs> and it's more than just Independence Day, but... It's a downside, Mark. Is that so? Oh, yes. Mm. If these critters don't stop balking, it'll be Christmas before we ever get to Clay City. <laughs> All right, Pierre, come on, start moving. Come on, come on, come on. Me, me, me. Yeah, that's it. Now, you too, Yvette. Both of you, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, what, <laughs> what was that you called him, Hire? Huh? Yeah, what's that? Well, uh, it sounded like Pierre. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, that's your name, Pierre and Yvette. Oh, no. Well, dude. what's the matter? They're perfectly <laughs> respectable names. <laughs> I seen a show once in Denver called the Paris Review. That was the title of it, from Paris, France. And there was a couple of dancers. Well, sir, if they didn't put on a jig, I'm telling you, Vip, it sure was something. The fella, he just picked up this girl and he threw every which way. <laughs> I thought she was going to land right in my lap. Oh, oh you did. Yeah, yes, didn't that's the truth. Every word. And this here girl danced with him. She kept coming back for more, like she enjoyed being used for a lasso. <laughs> yes, Pierre and Yvette. That's what they was called. 
It was on a sign out in front of the Tabor Grand Opera House. Uh, those names always kind of stuck with me. So when I bought these burrs, well... You know bears. They ain't very particular about what you call them. No. <laughs> now, you just keep moving, Pierre. Come on. Keep moving. Yes, yes. That's uh, quite a load you're carrying there, Harm. Yes, it sure is. Well, <laughs> well, I guess I'll ride on. Maybe see you in town, huh? Uh, hold up a minute, Brett. Uh, ain't you going to ask me what's in them bags? Well, no, I... Just figured it wasn't any of my business. Well, I'm going to tell you anyhow. Uh-huh. Yeah, if I don't tell somebody, I'll bust. Besides, I... I... I knew I can trust you. Hmm? Yeah, you will, Pierre. Whatever, 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 whatever. Britt, I've struck it. I've made a strike the like of which I've never even dreamed of. Oh? Easy, easy, Scott. Look at yeah. now, you see? Uh-huh. You see this here sack right here? Yeah. This one right here? If it don't assay out to over a thousand dollars... A thousand dollars? that ain't the half of it. There's plenty more where this come from. Well, that sure sounds good, it huh? It is good. Well, I just bet the vein I found it delivers more gold in a year than they ever took out of California. Is that so? Well, you sure are entitled to a strike, Hiram. You've been prospecting for quite a spell. Yeah, right? you have. Forty-five years, but yeah. Forty-five years. Come winter. But I ain't got no regrets. Not now, I ain't. I told him in Clay City, I told him all there was gold in the Saucer Mountains. Oh, I could smell it. Just the way my birds sniff water. But they wouldn't listen, no. They said old Hiram was catched, that I'd never find nothing but yellow-colored rocks. <laughs> yeah. Well, start singing a different song now. Oh, you're, you're, you're sure it's gold you found, Oh, huh? you think I don't know it when I see it? <laughs> you mark my words. Old Hiram has turned up the real thing. Of course, you, you mustn't let the news out. Oh. Not until after I get my assay report and file my claim. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, but... I just wish there was some other assay office around here. What's that? Well, that Enoch Wilson, he wouldn't know a gold nugget from a tea kettle. And what's more, I don't trust him. I don't trust him a bit. Well, no harm. You know, some he... of the samples I brought him in before looked mighty good to me, but not to Enoch. I don't think he even tested him. Well, just let him try to say that this batch is worth it. Yeah, you just let him try to say that. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with Scar. He sure is restless. Well, then you go on ahead, Britt. Just go on ahead. You know, well, I guess it might as well. Easy, boy. Easy. I hope everything works out the way you expect, huh? Don't you worry yourself about that. Yeah, well, nice run into you. Mutual, Britt. Mutual. All righty, Dick. Come on, come on, come on. You can't eat that cactus. Get your nose out of there. I'll give you a taste of something. Of course, not spicy. just going down when we got to Clay City. I figured on stopping at the hotel first, making sure of a bed, but Scar had other ideas. He headed right straight for the livery stable. There just wasn't any doubt about it. He'd remembered that filly. Yes, sir. And, and mind you, I'm not saying that a horse can really get a disappointed expression on his face, but I'll tell you this much. Scar gave a pretty good imitation of it when he saw a big roan stallion occupying what had been that filly's stall. Well, I left him there anyway, and I got myself supper in a room. And about nine o'clock, I started feeling sleepy, you know. I just pulled off my boots. Oh, yeah. Doc, God, a man sure does get tired and stays up late. Holy smoke, what's that? Oh, those shots right outside my window. I, I grabbed my gun, and I... Oh... Oh, and then I saw I wouldn't be needing the gun. <laughs> a couple of kids shooting off Chinese firecrackers. After that hurt. Well, it didn't look like I was going to get much sleep that night. And the way things worked out, I sure didn't. Well, well yeah? Who is it? Hiram, Britt. i got to talk to you. It's important. Well, come on in. Oh, thanks, Britt. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what's the matter? What's the matter? You look like you're getting ready for a real hard winter. Enoch Wilson. That's what's the matter. Remember, Britt, I told you I didn't trust him. Do you remember that when yeah, I said that? Yes, yeah. well, I got me some proof. What's in Oh, no, it's, it's just, uh, just some firecrackers, Hiram. And Enoch, he... What, he says you haven't found gold? No, huh? no, 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 no. He ain't said nothing one way or the other. But by the time I got the birds into town tonight, it was almost 7 o'clock. Enoch was just closing up the assay office. Uh-huh. But well, I give him them sacks of gold, you see. And I said I wanted a report as soon as possible. And you know what he told me? I can't say as I do, no. Friday. 
He says I couldn't have no word because... He says I couldn't have no word before late Friday. Why, Britt, that's two days off. Well, tomorrow being a holiday. Well, that's the excuse he tried to hand me to. Oh, that lion skunk. Oh, no, no, no. You know, the 4th of July is a pretty important occasion. Well, that right? don't give him the right to tell me a whole pack of lies, does it? No, well, no, no. Of course it doesn't. No, no. Anyhow, I had to leave my gold with him. I didn't have no choice. So I got me a bowl of Irish beef stew over at the O'Brien's Cafe, and then I went back to see about the burrows. Uh, and that's when I noticed the light in Enoch's office. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, so naturally, I was kind of suspicious, so I snuck up and, and I peeked through the window. You know what I saw, Brent? I haven't the faintest idea. He was uh, sitting at the desk, Enoch himself, getting ready to do some assaying. And if those weren't my three sacks of gold in front of him, I'll trade you a whole hog for a slice of bacon. That's what I'll do. Well, supposing Enoch was testing your oil, that doesn't prove anything. Don't you see, Brett? He's fixing to take my oil for himself. And once he makes up his mind how valuable it is, he'll do a little substituting. And I'll wind up with three bags of rocks when I come in to see him on Friday. Oh, no. Probably man. aims to find out where I got it, too. Oh, yes. File the claim himself. No, no, that doesn't sound very then likely. Then why did he say it'd be Friday before he'd know anything? Why'd he tell me that if he was planning to work tonight? Well, if you're so upset about it, you should have just come right straight out and asked him. I'm going to ask you, Britt. That's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask him, but... But I want you there when I confront him. Me? Enoch's already lied to me once today. But if you're with me, if he sees you're my friend, yeah, maybe he'll think twice before he tries anything funny. Yeah? Maybe I'll get a decent assay for a change. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand where I come in. Enoch thing. knows you, don't he? Knows that you're the six-shooter? Well, we've met up a couple of times. Yes, then. well, come on then. But let's get over there while we can catch him oh, red-handed. Well, wait a minute. Now, hold on. Wait! You know how much this strike means to me. You ain't gonna let anybody swindle me out of it. No, no, no. Up. We ain't got all night. All right, all right. Just give me a chance to tuck in my shirt tail. You see the light, Brit? He's still here. Now, you just remember one thing, Hiram. This wasn't my idea. Sure, 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 sure. Who is it? What do you want? Hiram Garver. That's who it is. And Britt Ponce is with me, too. So you better get this door open. No, Hiram. You, you, you just remember. Howdy, Britt. What's the trouble? Well, I, uh... There they are, Britt. With... There you are. There. You see right there? See? Them are my sacks. Of course they're your sacks, you see, Hiram. You see, he ain't denied it, either. Hiram, are you going loco or something? I'll do the asking, Enoch. And you'll do the answering from now on. And you better not lie in front of Britt Pines, either. Huh? I thought you said you wasn't going to be able to ask say this horror before Friday. What if I did? Well, it appears like you changed your mind, don't it? Well, Britt wants to know the reason. Well, it was just that you were kind of anxious, that's all. And your stuff did look a little more promising than usual. Hey, what I tell you, Britt? Yeah, what I tell you? Yeah, he knew it was good. <laughs> I said it looked promising, Hiram. Promising enough so you try to cheat me out of it, eh? Well, you're not getting away with it, do you, Mac? The six shooter here will see to that. Now, now, just hold on. Hiram Grover, I ought to throw you right out of my office. If I was trying to cheat you, would I have sent word for you to stop in tomorrow morning for the parade and get your assay report? You just, you did. You sent word? You just asked Mike O'Brien. I was over at his cafe looking for you. You'd already left, though. I told him if he saw you, he'd give him the message. You... you told Mike? Well, Hiram? Well, doggone it, Bill. How was I to know? You think he might have stumbled into something, Enoch? Real strike? Well, ain't part of it yet, Britt, but... some of the samples are mighty encouraging. A couple more tests. Evening, gentlemen. Who... 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 who, who are you? Well, turn around and just grab for some air, all three of them. Well, no, you come just on, wait a minute, Danny. Do a little stretching before we... That's better. It was real considerate of you to stay open tonight, mister. Saved us the trouble of breaking in. All right, then. Let's start loading up. We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in just a moment. Our religious institutions are strongholds of the American way of life. 
Our country was founded by men who had faith in God and who were willing to endure hardship and sacrifice for the sake of that faith. Today, the religious institutions in your community need your interest and support, so take an active part in religious affairs. Your pastor, rabbi, or priest will give you invaluable family counsel and aid if you are a newcomer to the community. To face the problems of the future, America must be morally strong. And that moral strength comes through worship and faith. Go to church this week and take someone with you. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. and leather jackets, both carrying 45s. They're about the same build, same color, and look enough like to be brothers. They hadn't bothered covering their faces. That meant they weren't worrying about being recognized. Probably didn't come from Clay City. The tall one gave most of the orders. Who's running this office? Will somebody speak up? I, 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 I do the ass saying. That's more like it. And you'd be the fellow who'd know how to open this safe. Well, uh, there ain't really nothing worth... Cut out the stalling, mister. Get over here. Move! Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. You know, so he didn't have much choice. So he bent down in front of the cast iron safe and started fiddling with the dial. And the other outlaw, the short one, he was standing beside the desk. He reached out his free hand. He picked up one of Hiram's ore sacks. Well, here's something, man. Feels pretty heavy, too. Can you let that alone, mister? All right, take it easy, That there all belongs to me. You ain't got no right to it. Guess you don't hear so good. I told you to take it easy. You think you can bully me just because you're holding a forty-five? No harm. Yeah, you've got another thing coming, young fella. I spent most of my life hunting that gold, and you ain't gonna walk in here and swipe it. You just let it be, or I... The next thing I, I knew, Harm gave a leap forward. I tried to stop him, but it was too late. <laughs> For a second, he just kept on moving. Oh, a step or two. And his legs buckled and he grabbed the edge of the desk. But his fingers couldn't hold the grip. Both the outlaws were staring at Hiram. They weren't watching me. Get down, Enoch. My bullet hit the short one in the arm. The gun flew halfway across the office. And the other one spun around and knocked over the kerosene lamp. I got off a second shot. It was so dark I wasn't sure I'd hit anything or not. For a couple of minutes, there wasn't a sound. Nothing but heavy breathing. I stretched out my hand, and I felt a chair. I waited a second, and then I, I gave it a good hard push. He sure had good ears. The bullet splintered into the chair before it even toppled over. But the flash of his gun showed me where he was. Crouched right behind the safe, out of range. I edged over to the right. If I could just get past the window without him seeing me. I made a dot and fired. <laughs> Enoch lit up another lamp. The boy that was shot in the arm, he hadn't passed out. He was just lying there, staring at me. Looking even younger than he had when he first came into the office. The other fellow, he'd taken a bullet in the shoulder and he was bleeding pretty bad. But Hiram, he was worse off than either of them. He was flat on his back, gasping for breath. There was a big red splotch on his chest and his mouth was covered with sort of a pink foam like. It's a good thing Doc Nibble's house was in the next block. <laughs> Well, Doc? Oh. Yeah, it's too early to tell anything yet, Bert. I got the bullet out, and he's still hemorrhaging. I see. And them other two. They'll be as good as ever in a week or so. Good enough for a hanging if Hiram don't pull through. Oh, no, no. He's just got to pull through, Doc. Uh, he's an old man, Bert. You've seen fellas a lot younger. <sighs> yeah. Well, you better get yourself some rest. It's almost 4 a.m. Well, I... I've... 
start maybe well, I... there's nothing you can do here. Ain't a chance of him coming to before morning. I, I was standing right beside him when it happened. I could have drawn maybe and then... Uh, I... Maybe then you'd both be shut up. And I'll see you in the morning, Bridge. Well, I went back to the hotel, but I just couldn't sleep. I... Around about 6.30, I gave up trying. I figured it was too soon to find out how Hiram was doing, so I went for a little walk around town. I wasn't very hungry, but as long as Mike's Cafe was open, I thought I just might as well stop in for a cup of coffee. And I was just going through the door when Enoch Wilson came up running. Brick! Yeah, Brick. yeah. Good morning, Enoch. I was hoping I'd run into you. Stopped by the hotel, but they said you was out. Yeah, I was sort of looking the town over. I, uh, I just left Hiram. Oh, well, he, he's, he's, he's not... No, 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 no. It sure don't look good. Oh? Doc Nibble says he, he's got a good, strong constitution for a man his age. He'd have a pretty fair chance. But Hiram just don't seem to have any fight left in him. He ain't even trying to live. Well, has he come to? Yeah, about, about an hour ago. I happened to be there. You see, I went back to the office after that gunfight last night and finished up Hiram's assay. Oh? Well, I thought maybe if it turned out to be something good, well, I, I wanted Hiram to, to know about it before he... Oh, yeah, well, that was mighty thoughtful of you, Enoch. Yeah, and, and it is good, Britt. A real strike. Well, well, didn't you tell Hiram? Oh, sure, sure. I, uh, but, but it... Well, it didn't seem to make no difference to him. He, he just nodded and sort of dozed off on like he didn't even care. Is that so? And Doc don't understand it neither. He'd think, if anything, it'd make him want to live. Knowing he'd found gold, sure turned the trick. Yeah, yeah, you sure would. Maybe he figures I'm lying to him because he's so bad off. Uh-huh. Well, I guess it could be that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we thought, uh, Doc and me... Uh, we thought, well, uh, maybe if he used to hear it from, from you, well, uh... Oh, sure, sure, you know, I'll, I'll go right over there, sure. Hello, Harm, how you feeling? Oh, oh pretty good, Brad, I'm pretty good. Oh, well, the doc says you're going to be all right real soon, too. Yes, yes, yes. Sure, sure. Of course, you've got to help him along some, you know. He can't cure you single-handed, you know. Oh, don't. It don't matter, Brad. It just don't matter. Oh, now, what are you talking about, Hiram? Well, I figured you'd be jumping up and down, fighting your way out of bed when you heard the news. You mean about the gold? Sure, sure. Enoch said he told you. Yeah. He told me. <laughs> well, you you believe him, don't you, Hiram? <laughs> well, I shouldn't have believed him. I knew it was a real thing when I first found it. I knew it was real. Still, maybe, maybe that was the sign. The the, the sign. What? That my life's over. What? Forty-five uh, years I spent looking for that yellow stuff. Well, now I finally found it. I. I ain't got no reason to go on looking, no reason at all. I found it. <coughs> I'm awful tired, Brad. I'm awful tired. Well, you, you, you're going to be a rich man, Hiram. Oh, I wasn't hunting gold because it's making me rich, Brad. Oh, maybe when I was younger that was the reason, but lately, these past few years, I just wanted to prove to folks that I... Knew what I was talking about, so that I wasn't catched like they thought. No, of course you are. Nose or samples prove it, Brit. So it ain't gonna be too hard to die. Ain't gonna be hard at all. I've done what I set out to do, so I reckon I'm luckier than most men. Well, I. That's one way of looking at it, I guess. Yeah, this goes to show you things work out for the best, Bruce. For the best. Yeah. Well, uh, 
maybe Enoch did the right thing after all, so... Mm. Uh, Oh, nothing, nothing, Hiram, nothing. I, no, you better get some rest. Uh, yeah. She started to say something huh? to you about Enoch. Uh, huh? Did I? Uh, yes, finish it up, Richard. What was that you were going to say? Uh, what, what I was going to say? Uh, well, now, you're a pretty sick man, Hiram. You, I wouldn't want to get you all upset. Uh, uh, I'm upset? What are you driving at, Brad? Well, uh, you're weak and feeble, and it wasn't my idea, of course. Well, you, you don't mean that Enoch... Uh, was lying to me that that ore wasn't full of gold? Uh, now, I didn't say that. I knew um, Enoch I, Wilson uh... couldn't be trusted, so it ain't true uh, about my strike. Now, uh, uh, So they figured I'm... I was going to die, didn't they? Then uh... they'd all have the laugh on me. But I ain't going to be that obliged. I'll get well if it kills me. Uh... And I'll find gold, too, right out there in those mountains where I always said I'd find it. Oh, they think they're going to soft-soap me into kicking the bucket, don't they? Oh, they do. Well, Britt, you just tell them different. I'd be glad to, Hiram. I sure would be glad to. Well, by the time Hiram got well and found out he was responsible for a genuine gold rush, well, there just wasn't much he could do about it. And the way the money poured in, and faster than Hiram could spend it, no matter how hard he tried, he sure went in for some fly-by-night schemes, too. Like that with that organizing a prospecting expedition to go up to Alaska, some place called the Pond, uh, the Cl- Klondike, I think it was, something like that. Everybody knew he'd never find gold up in a place like that because uh, they're all expecting him to come back any day now and admit that it was just a wild goose chase. But, uh, but he he hasn't shown up last time I was through Clay City. Folks are beginning to wonder what's keeping him. The Six Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may soon be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Herb Bygren, Bill Johnstone, Barney Phillips, Tony Barrett, and Howard McNear, who played Hiram. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. This is Hal Gibney speaking. This is the NBC Radio Network.